Well, hey there, my friends. Welcome to my channel and another fun memory planning Monday. I'm Laura Daniels, and I love using color paper and ink to tell my ordinary story and bring it to life with photos, journaling, and just a titch of whimsy. It's where I sift through my current stash to find just the right paper, stickers, ephemera to document my past week. So if you're interested in hearing my planning process and then seeing how all of this comes together using the beautiful kit from Planners Anonymous called Country Cottage, then stick around and let's have some fun together. Woo -wee, are we gonna have some fun with this kit? It is just absolutely beautiful. I wanna go over these supplies so you can see what we're gonna be using and I'm glad you decided to stick around. So here is the sticker book. This is from Planners Anonymous. It's called Country Cottage. And it has, oh, look at these. That is beautiful. And this is like a clear sticker with a jar right there. I love that. And you know how I like to use the Monday through Sunday stickers and then put the dates underneath so I could choose one of these that actually works with the colors of my photos and then I still have some for another week. How cool is that? These don't really go with how I do my stop the blur and then of course we have some stickers. Oh I love that right there. All right so those are the stickers. Look at the bike. Love it. This is the stamp set. You can see how that has a bike I'll use. has some bunnies. I love the flowers. I love this brick wall. Oh, that would be pretty to use. These are the, the washi tape that came in the kit, and I actually made a sample so you all can see it a little clearer. So these are the actual um, rolls of washi. And then I brought in this gold. It's not really a gold. I think it's got a rose gold. That's what I would call that. Uh, the distressed inks I brought out to go with this is Stormy Sky, Peeled Paint, and Pumice Stone. Here are my photos. I got Little Button, my granddaughter. This was Mother's Day. This was my mom and I making some uh, carbonara sauce. My husband, the beekeeper. More on Mother's Day. These are some fun posts I had on Facebook and then our garden. And then, of course, I always write the specific events and what day. So I at least have them on the correct side of the page. Here are some more stickers I have to work with. And this is always a fun sticker because it flips so that you actually have a book that's opening up, a planner. And this would be a great tip in and to have something on the other side. And then, of course, we have to go through the pages. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. And this could be used as a cutout. You know that I have the window, and then you flip this open from this side, and then behind it could be an actual photo of my week. I love this planter with the two bunnies in it. And then, of course, this right here, the cart with the seeds and the flowers. Here is a nice solid piece, vellum. Oh, this is gorgeous. This can be used along the border at the bottom of a page. Here's a nice solid, because see, there's, they're always two-sided, okay? Here is, remember the brick that was on the stamp set? Here's the brick right here. That is beautiful. Here's the flip side. I love how there are always solids to work with, though I hate having to cut into the beautiful print on the flip side just to get to the solid. This is a very pretty green. And then we have these seed packets. They can be cut out individually and have cascading down the side of the page. We have this brown. And then we have this one with these adorable little bunnies. And then this acetate. See it has the flowers on it. I'm not sure how well you can see that. See the two, I don't know, what are, what are these called? Tulips? And I'm not sure what these are right here. They're probably not tulips at all. <laughs> let's be real. All right, so let's go through some of the ephemera that came in the kit. Now this is me de-stashing my kit, so I'm sure this kit is not available anymore, but you can always check their website to find out. 
and I just had this in my closet. Why I never used this, I don't know. Look at that. Oh, I love that. And this adorable bunny. Here's a woman walking with her flowers. I always love it when the face is hidden. Hidden. There's kind of like an enigma to it. Or who could it be? What does she look like? Does she have blonde hair, brown hair? This adorable bucket right here. The bicycle. And then these are beautiful. These could be used sticking out the top corner of the page. And then we have... This looks like um, it's something that go on the top of a table, the center of a dining room table. Here's one of those seed packets. It's a little bigger. And then we have, oh, the watering can with the flowers inside, some more seed packets. Oh, is that not adorable? <laughs> Okay, so we are going to have some fun. I hope that you're going to stick around even longer because the next step is I'm going to give you my thought process on how I'm thinking I might want to lay it down on the week. So stick around. I cannot wait to see how this all comes together. You know me, I get excited as you guys do to see what the end result is going to be because just like you, I literally have no idea. But this is what I'm kind of thinking. So let me lay out the photos first. I printed them all up. Now, these two of my mom and I, which is such a hilarious story, I gotta tell you about it, when we are making some carbonara sauce, I don't want this on top because of the reds and the blacks and they really won't go with the theme of the page. And then along the bo <laughs> bottom, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I wanted to put these photos of our garden and I was thinking of doing one of the photo slides that Heidi Swap taught in one of her classes. And basically how that works is you do a sheet of paper on the uh, where you know during one of the weeks that you want to put it so it's cut that length and then you lay the photos you cut a separate two by two and a half or two and a quarter and you cut slits and that piece of paper slides in so you have like an accordion fold and the photos will go like this laying on top of each other see what i'm saying but they'll flip up like this so that's my thought process and on the top the photo that's showing um i want to watch the colors so again it goes with my color scheme so I'm thinking I don't necessarily want these bright reds on top, so that would go underneath. And here, the purple would be pretty, so that could be flipping up. And then perhaps the, the hostas, but you see how they kind of lay over the top of each other. Then I was thinking there are all these adorable bunnies and so I was, maybe I could have a bunny sticking out from behind there and then one on the very end back here. So when you flip them all up, you're just seeing all these hidden bunnies in the garden. So I was real excited about that. Now with these, I love this print. And I'm wondering if I can do something where you open the shutters on three or four different of these and behind them is a photo. Also, I could do this big one right here and have it cut right along here that this opens up and there's a photo behind that. And then on the vellum, look how beautiful that is. <clears throat> and what I could do is cut it along this line so it's not a straight line. It kind of has some uh, visual texture to it and have this be a tip in that comes over the edge and it could actually go over the side if I want to do that over the edge. And then <clears throat> this brick, I was thinking of using the pumice stone and doing some texture in the background. I was thinking of using the seed packet to maybe have that be the end tab and then look at these that she has in the kit. See how the floors are like this? Well, when you fold it, it makes a beautiful tab or, you know, if I need to flip up some photos. Isn't that? And then here's the bike. Oh, well, let me finish the photos. Sorry. All right. So this is my granddaughter. And then these are all about Mother's Day. So here's where I may have 
the windows opening with peaks underneath. I'm not quite sure. Another thing I thought about, see the top of the wagon? The wagon. See the top of the bicycle, the basket. And a lot of times if you're making a tip-in, you want something to be able to hold it down. So the, top, the basket on the bicycle could hold it down right there. And then the other thing I wanted to show you in this thought process, I think I'm going to use this days of the week in the muted brown so I can bring out the blues and the greens. And then look at these that I could do you know, at different points coming off the page. So I'm excited. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit her somewhere in there. So, all right, I'm going to be gone for a New York second, which I sometimes wonder what that means, because I guess a lot can be fit into a New York second. So that means I'm putting a lot into the second that's for you. So I'll be right back. I am very happy with how this came out. It took you a YouTube second of sitting there and it took me about 60 minutes to get this all together but I'm excited to go over it with you look at this vellum does that not just look beautiful and I cut along the edge of the florals and the leaves to give it even more dimension isn't that beautiful and on this side I decided to add a little bit of ephemera on the side these are two Facebook screenshots and this is everything to do with Mother's Day. A message to my kids, a message to my mom, and then my kids' messages to me. And I used one of the stickers from the kit that flipped over side to side to form a tab. And then this is my granddaughter, Diana, just being adorable. And you can see, remember how I had mentioned using this piece of ephemera and the basket to use as a tab to keep the photo down. So I thought that came out real good. I used some washi here along the bottom. I put some stickers back in behind the photos here. And then look at this, do you see the brick? Remember there was this stamp set and I used the pumice stone and I thought it came out beautifully. So I have the brick there, brick there, and I did some splattering with the peeled paint to bring out the colors. And then for the dates, I used the sticker sheet that had uh, Monday through Sunday, and then the dates, the actual date of the date. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the other page, and I have such a hilarious story to tell you. All right, so up here, remember how I had this piece of paper and I had said I wanted to cut out the window and use it as a window. So I was so excited about that. So here, I cut it out. All I did was cut along this edge and I used um, roller tape to tape both these down. I used a sticker, no, I'm sorry, a piece of ephemera to be able to keep it closed. So on the outside, you have the bunny peeking out the window and then you lift the window and then there's a photo of my husband, the infamous beekeeper. That's a whole nother story in itself. Now down here at the bottom, I tried a new technique that Heidi Swap had offered in her class and it was to create one of these. And basically you have a piece of paper on the bottom that's the width of your day during the week. You cut slits in it, and then you attach your photos with the front and the back to another piece of paper, and you slip it in the slat, and then you glue the whole thing down. So it gives you cascading photos. Now you could do this with five photos, four photos, or you could have, you know, this be the a long photo and then have two that flip over it right here. So there is a lot of fun adaptations you can use with this. And if you recall, I wanted to have the bunnies picking out, peeking out, remember? So I have the bunny in the very back. Then I put bunnies here, because it is a garden. And then I have a pretty flower pot here. And this is all about our garden. And then I use this uh, sticker for the seed packet right here. Now this is the funny story I've got to tell you. And I posted it on Facebook. And what I did is I just screenshotted not only the story, but then the photos. So 
Now, I'm an Italian, so when my mom came to visit, we decided to try a new spaghetti carbonara that my son recommended. And mom and I are more your red sauce Italians. And I love to cook sauce like Grandma Olga did, eight to 10 hours on the stove top. Well, mom and I were excited to try this new recipe, but we got stressed when we came to this part in the recipe. And honestly, this is how it was written. We have now reached a crucial moment of your spaghetti carbonara. Not to stress you out, but this is the fleeting moment when you either create an immortal dish that everyone will love or it'll be a dismal failure. You must be quick. You must be ready. You must be ruthless. So mom and I get to this point in the recipe and we're like, oh my gosh. We were just a little stressed. And then we had the guanciale it was sizzling in the pan and the spaghetti was ready. So we were ready to do this because we didn't want to have scrambled eggs and pasta. So mom and I made a plan. Okay, mom, you get the pan and the guanciale. I got the spaghetti, I'll drop it in the pan, you stir, then we turn off the heat, add the eggs and the pecorino cream sauce. And if this happens, we'll do this. And of course, the recipe is telling you all this. If this happens, do this. By the time we got to the point where we're trying to mix everything together and the sauce was getting thick, we were sweating. And then the sauce was hard to stir. And there's no way anyone could have done this without two people. And then we started laughing. And my friends, you know me and my mom, we laugh all the time. Once we started laughing, it was all over. And I looked over my shoulder and there's my husband videotaping us trying to make this spaghetti carbonara. <laughs> so that is the story. So of course that needs to go in the weekly journal because that's our story. It's all that funny stuff, all those little memories that you forget the story. You forget how to tell the story, but you tell it when you are doing your stop the blur. You're stopping all that hecticness of life to go, okay, what was my story last week? What happened? All right, my friends, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed our time together. I know I do immensely. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and you want me to create more. It just takes a quick second. Tap that thumbs up and be sure to check out the Stop Blur uh, playlist that I have listed in the description below so you can catch up on all the past episodes. Until we meet again, God bless you. Have a great day. We'll tell a story again next time. Bye-bye.